herzlich willkommen zurück zu The Outer Worlds. Da unten steht der Gefängnisroboter, gegen den wir kämpfen müssen. Und praktischerweise haben wir auch ein paar gute Fähigkeiten gegen Roboter. Das sollte uns helfen. Außerdem haben wir viel Munition dabei. Wir sind eigentlich ganz gut ausgerüstet. Er speichert nochmal automatisch. Das finde ich nett. Ram. Dann wollen wir mal. Okay, Ram. Jetzt weiß ich auch, warum er so heißt. Er rammt. Ja, das sieht aber ganz gut aus. Heilen wir mal eben kurz. Wir haben ja ein bisschen Heilpakete, haben wir ja dabei. Oh, da sind ein paar Ads. Die gibt es ja also auch. Schon ein bisschen her, dass ich diesen Kampf gemacht habe. Boah, dann noch so schnelle Drohnen. Das ist böse. Oh, wie Chaos. Ne, Sam ist das. Das ist der Sam. So, wieder mit der Drohne. Okay, Sam kommt aber auch wieder mit der zweiten Luft. Sehr schön. Und dann ist der Ramp gleich vernichtet. Okay, das habe ich deutlich schwieriger in Erinnerung. Das habe ich wesentlich schwieriger in Erinnerung. Easy. Ich dachte, wir würden hier vielleicht ein, zwei, drei Anläufe brauchen. Scheinbar nicht. So, aufschließen, öffnen, auf nach oben. Tja, ist die Frage, ob wir für Neas jetzt auch töten müssen. Hier sieht es aber wieder sehr schick aus. Wir müssen für Neas töten. Können wir jetzt Akande töten? <lacht> Sorry, ich musste es einfach testen. So. Jetzt geht's wahrscheinlich. Versiegelt. Jetzt nochmal benutzen. Okay. Yeah, das lassen Sie endlich machen. Thank the law you're here. That madman was out of control. You were right to put him down. He was too far gone to be of any use to us. And what about you? You aren't hurt, I hope. Ach, Sophia, ich wusste ja gar nicht, dass ich dir wichtig bin. Why shouldn't I be interested in the well-being of my finest agent? Not to mention my most valuable investment. You've put down the worst riot in our history. Rid the colony of a dangerous madman and saved my life. The board owes you a tremendous debt. We don't have a moment to lose. We're gonna have to work together to save Halcyon, because the situation is far worse than you imagined. Was könnte denn noch schlimmer sein als der Zusammenbruch der Kolonie? What I'm about to tell you must never leave this room under any circumstances. We've lost all contact with Earth. It's been three years since we received a message. We've had no contact, no signals, nothing. Earth has gone dark. Two years ago, the Earth Directorate's frigate disappeared in route to Earth. We don't know if they ever made it. We don't know if there's an Earth to go back to. Earth is only an idea to us. But that idea is the bedrock the colony is built upon. If people were to find out it's gone dark, the shock could be too much to bear. That's precisely why no one else must know the truth. We're going to have to keep this secret to ourselves. We're alone, Captain. That's all I know for certain. Whatever happens to this colony, we're going to have to deal with it on our own. Returning to Earth is not an option. Dann sollten wir uns besser an die Arbeit machen. Wir haben noch eine Menge zu tun. Yes, we do have a long road ahead of us. But I have faith in you. The service you've done for this colony is nothing short of extraordinary. You're the reason I'm still standing here today. The board will survive because of you. And as the board goes... So goes Halcyon. It's time we carried out the program. I trust I can count on your support, Captain. <lacht> Könnten wir jetzt eigentlich... Äh Aber jetzt nehme ich die... Ach, wir können selber... Ähm wir könnten selber jetzt äh, an die Macht gelangen. Das ist natürlich verlockend. Aber wir sind dumm. Wir sind dumm. Mensch, egal. Ich hole mir meinen Rizzo's Purple Berry Munch. I 
don't know what I expected. Well, I suppose I'll just get on with saving the colony then. Enjoy your treat. <lacht> ja. Der OVD sagt, dass alles also, oh. that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The riots in Tartarus ended in a total victory for the board. Without any significant threats to challenge their power, the board asserted their control over the colony. The lifetime employment program began immediately, and the people of Halcyon did exactly what they were expected to do. They obeyed. Sophia Akande converted the labyrinth from a prison to a processing center. She jettisoned the original colonists out of the home and transformed the ship into a massive storage facility. One by one, the workers of Halcyon surrendered themselves to the program. They arrived with their families and their friends, their colleagues and their neighbors. And then, one by one, they marched into their stasis chambers. As the workers of Halcyon slept in their hibernation chambers, their settlements became ghost towns, left behind by the board to be reclaimed by nature. Only Byzantium remained, a shining beacon of civilization in an otherwise abandoned colony. The people of Byzantium spent the rest of their days gorging themselves on their stockpile of resources. As for the workers of Halcyon, they never felt the effects of the collapse. They never felt anything at all. The board's focus on Byzantium closed the door on much of Sanjar's civil liberties movement. As the last few townships withered away, MSI had little room to grow. Ever the savvy businessman, however, Sanjar pivoted and established Stellar Bay as the colony's supplier of luxury seafood. Catering to the elite, MSI was allowed to continue operations as a member of the Halcyon board and became more successful than Sanjar could ever have dreamed. Sublight Salvage adapted to the changes in Halcyon shifting their business model to suit the times. Their claims of legitimacy were scrutinized, but ultimately unquestioned. Lilia Hagen would continue to protect her family as ruthlessly as ever. Edgewater's cannery met its production quota for the first time in three years. As a result, the adjutant rewarded every worker in Edgewater with a place in the lifetime employment program. Reed Dobson, was granted 25 years in suspended animation. However, a computing error adjusted his duration to 250 years. A trouble ticket to resolve this error remains open. While the groundbreaker remained mechanically stable, the changing times forced June Lay Tennyson to make some difficult calls on behalf of her community. The work of maintaining independence was an uphill climb and she found herself caving to bad faith compromises with the board. Time will tell if the groundbreaker can endure. As smaller settlements were swallowed up and their workers drafted into the lifetime employment program, Byzantium continued to thrive. While its citizens lived in decadence and extravagance, a small cadre of scientists worked to solve the nutrition crisis that threatened Halcyon. No one else much noticed the townships that disappeared from the map, or the luxuries that slowly lost their luster year by year. Even the Gorgon asteroid, though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. Gorgon's restored facilities presented a tantalizing boon to the lifetime employment program. The promise of a more productive, more compliant workforce. It was too good for a Kande to pass up, especially when Tartarus and the many underperforming townships across Terra II offered fodder for additional research. Minnie Ambrose found herself leading the project under a Kande's watchful eye. Her organizational acumen kept the project afloat, but just barely. With the specter of failure ever present, 
she came to appreciate the struggles the late Dr. Ambrose had faced. In spite of everything, the Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster in humanity's most ambitious efforts. Your influence further cemented Ellie's perspective. She understood she could never truly rely on others, so she set about making sure she wouldn't have to. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She enjoyed a long and infamous career running missions across the system. Some of them were even legal. As the board reasserted control over Halcyon, Felix came to realize that his life as an upstart rebel had come to an end. The board's victory crushed any hope for a grand revolution across Halcyon. And so Felix, once again, found himself without a purpose in life. And so, disillusioned with his former boss and with nowhere left to go, Felix left his crew without saying goodbye. He was never heard from again. As a reward for his part in her courageous rescue, the adjutant invited the vicar known as Max to become one of the leaders of the Order of Scientific Inquiry. But Max had no interest in serving any organization, let alone the OSI, which he knew would never tolerate his heretical theories. Instead, he attempted to minister to the people of Byzantium. They rejected his ideas, being far too satisfied with their own material comforts. Disillusioned, Max gave up and left the city. He was never heard from again. Though Parvati eventually grew comfortable aboard the Unreliable, she never quite came out of her shell. She seemed to prefer the company of Ada to the crew, and she could often be found neck deep in cables and grease, telling Ada funny stories from her childhood. As the board began to roll out their lifetime employment program, Parvati was plagued by dreams of freezing to death. She began taking increasingly longer shore leave, and she eventually disappeared from the unreliable entirely. The board never knew what became of her, and under the adjutant's orders, they never tried to find out. Parvati was afforded a measure of peace and left to her own devices. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide, or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Though Minister Clark was eventually released from house arrest, long years of isolation left him a changed man, little suited for bureaucratic work or for the colony that was changing around him. He remained in his estate largely by choice, fading from public view. Adjutant Sophia Akande was instrumental in executing the lifetime employment program. While the rest of Byzantium celebrated, Sophia returned to work. She devoted herself to ensuring that Byzantium remained prosperous for many generations to come, and to finding an answer to Earth's silence. With Halcyon's workers suspended in a state of hibernation, starvation and chaos are problems of the past. The lifetime employment program succeeded in its goals, but that success came at a price. The Halcyon of today is nothing at all like the colony of yesteryear. Power remains concentrated in Byzantium, but all the colony's resources serve the lifestyle of the elite, thereby transforming Halcyon into one of the smallest and most exclusive colonies in the system. And what about you? the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon. After you rescued her in Tartarus, Sophia Akande offered you any reward you could imagine. Power, wealth, influence. However, you were more interested in the simple pleasures in life. 
like the smooth, artificially enhanced flavor of a Rizzo's Purple Berry Munch. Rizzo's Purple Berry Munch, the only snack in Halcyon, officially endorsed by the captain of the unreliable. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. Ja, und das war The Outer Worlds und inklusive des DLCs Pavel und Gorgon. Wie gesagt, wir werden zurückkehren für den zweiten DLC, der ja schon angekündigt ist äh, und irgendwann 2021 erscheinen soll. Wahrscheinlich auch eher gegen Ende des Jahres. Der erste kam ja im September 2020, meine ich, raus. Und dann wird der zweite sicherlich dann auch etwa ein Jahr später kommen, kann man zumindest von ausgehen. Vielleicht ist es aber auch zum Zeitpunkt der Veröffentlichung schon klar, wann er kommt. Dann werden wir den natürlich auf jeden Fall noch nachholen. Speicherstand dafür habe ich ja. Und ja, ich finde es schön, dass sie für den dummen Weg, für die dumme Antwort am Ende dann tatsächlich auch nochmal einen eigenen Endscreen haben. Kurze Ansage, sehr schön. Ja, mir hat es Spaß gemacht. Natürlich ein Spiel mit Macken, keine Frage, aber an sich sehr schön gemacht, wie ich finde. Und zum Glück auch nicht so mega lang. Also der DLC hat das Ganze natürlich noch mal ein bisschen gestreckt. Aber ansonsten ging das jetzt sehr zügig, gerade gegen Ende. Wobei wir da natürlich dann aufgrund der großen Lügenfähigkeit ähm, dann ja uns schnell durchschleichen konnten. Und die MSI gar nicht brauchten, die uns da ja zur Hilfe kamen, ähm, weil wir ja auf Monarch so in deren Sinne gehandelt haben. Ist auf jeden Fall nett, dass sie dabei waren. Übrigens auch nett, dass ihr dabei wart. Freut mich, dass ihr es euch angeschaut habt und vielleicht sehen wir uns in einem anderen Spiel dann demnächst wieder. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen zum letzten Mal zu The Outer Worlds, zumindest erstmal und vielleicht sehen wir uns ja zum DLC wieder. Mach's gut, bis dann. <lacht>